start recording. So I wanted to take a few minutes to chat about a few things today um, before we get going. Um, first, Milestone 3 is coming up. Um, milestone 3 is approximately 90% of your models. I say 90% because I recognize there's always like little things you forget and you like be modeling and be like, hey, wait, I needed that. I forgot about that. Um, so basically what we're saying is like, you're pretty much ready to start rigging and animating at this point, right? Um, if you have to go back and, and do some, some uh, catch up models after that, that's okay. But we want to see the majority of your models. Um, also, again, review your schedule and asset list and see any changes that you have uh, made to that. And I'd like to see about half of those models already um, textured, right? So I'm going to eyeball these percentages. I'm not going to hold you to anything too, um, too specific. Um, I'm definitely not going to be doing any math um, to figure it out. But um, these milestones are primarily there to keep you on track to make sure you're, you're, um, you're hitting the right deadlines. When is that deadline? So for milestone three, it is the Wednesday we get back. So I went ahead and I was going to make it um, today, but I went ahead and gave you until after fall break. Because I recognize there's a portion of you who are probably like your fall break plans is to catch up on this semester, right? Um, if, if not, like kind of plan on, on wrapping that up sometime this week. I'm guessing Friday is going to be um, an abandoned wasteland in this place. Um, I'm guessing nobody is going to be here. Am I, am I right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, this is my guess. I, I will be in the building, but I'll be catching up on some stuff too. I, I'm 90 percent sure I'm going to be in the building. There's I'll a spend huh? Spend emails. Spend What? What's what's going on? Going to a Conor King's park. Ooh, which one is? Conor I didn't even know that was happening. Mm -hmm. That's cool. There's a there is a chance I'm going out of town over fall break, and if that happens, I'll respond to emails. I'm just not going to be super fast about it. Um, so just give me a heads up on all this. This is kind of where we're at. Um, fall break also just sort of signifies we're about at the halfway point right now, right? Um, do you feel half finished? <laughs> um, I'm still stuck on terrain. Still stuck on terrain. Yeah. Let's let me let me help you with that. Did, did you were you at a portfolio review last night? No, I can't. I think I think your best choice for terrain is going to be some form of projection mapping, um, but that that's my my two cents on. Like if you can find some good imagery on that, find something on like Pixabay or something like that. I was actually speaking to Livingston. He's like, yeah, there's like a way to do it. It's not with uh, displacement mapping. I, I know you can make a displacement map terrain. I can I can show you kind of quickly. You can do that. Well, in there is one thing I want to ask you though. Is okay. there a You probably can't. Well, so there's a couple of different shaders in Maya. Um, I'll give you a peek of what we're going to be working on here in a second. Um, I don't know why I always get two of those. So um, there are a couple of different shaders you can do. Um, if I assign a new material here, Arnold has a. Um, where's it at? Oh, um, I thought I just saw it. There it is. I was looking for one of these like darker shaded ones here. So AI wireframe will render the, the wireframe. By default, it doesn't look that great. Like if you just hit render on this, like you get that, right? Um, but you can change some of the, the details in this to get a better version of this. First, you don't want it in triangles, you want it in polygons. Um, and then um, secondly, your line color I don't know that like by default you can make it glow, but you can definitely make it like 
brighter, right? Um, so you can get you can get something like that pretty easily. I think you can also map in um, a little bit of a glow effect, but my thinking is that once you have this, like if you if you took that into Photoshop or Premiere, you could set that to a blending layer and you could make it glow a little bit more in Premiere too, and you could kind of control that. Does, does that make sense? Uh, yes. Um, I don't know if there is in here. You, usually how you do that, but um, I'll, I'll, this is a quick little tutorial we'll do. I'll go ahead and do a file, save this image as a PNG on my desktop. Um, wire. And then I'll apply a different material Assign new material, um, AI standard surface, render that again. Oh, I guess I need a light in there, don't I? Um, Arnold light. I'll move my camera. Let's bookmark it so I can. So let's say this is our regular model. Um, and so we should be able to open up this non wire, wire, get this too, right? Um, what you can do now is in Photoshop or Premiere. Um, So because I saved them as a PNG, I get my alpha, right? Um, so I'll drag the non-wire in here, open it up, right? So I get this alpha, so I can put whatever I want to on the background. Um, and I'm going to drag my wire in here on top of it. Right? And then from there, you would just do a blending mode on this wire. So probably what you could do is multiply. Um, that will get rid of all of the, the white on there. And then you could then adjust your opacity on that um, to get it on there a little fainter. Right? Um, you could also probably do um, is it screen. Screen is just the black. Um, overlay, probably going to get you a little bit more of just the, just the color, maybe. Um, or like soft light or something like that. You just do different versions of them, right? Um, and then just adjust your opacity here um, to get like fainter or, or brighter versions of it. Um, so Robert, in, in your case, what you would do instead is maybe um, do a, a filter or something like that on here that, that brightens it up. Or you could do image adjustments that's running your curves to. Right, would I have to do that with every PNG sequence? Uh, well, no, you, you could just do Premiere's version of it. Right? Like there, there's, um, if I open this up in Premiere, you'd have to do it with every PNG sequence if you wanted it to render that way. Like if, if you rendered, if you wanted like the entire film to have that wireframe look to it, um, you could do it that way. Now, uh, and then you just render out two different versions 
overlay them in Premiere and adjust the blending la layers. I think you have to do that as an effect. I think you drop an effect in there in Premiere, blending layers. Um, the other option is you could probably do something with that uh, tune shader um, to get, uh, there's a way you can make the tune shader show the outlines of your faces. And I think how you do that is you set the hardness of those faces a little bit more, like your, your normals on those, you set those to hard. And then it finds all of your edges in the tune shader. And then you have a little bit more control over how the tune shader um, renders your, your edges. Um, so yeah, we can, we can work with that stuff. If that's something you wanted to try, I can, I can help you with that, yeah. Um, yeah, I wanna ignore Premiere for now, because Premiere, uh, go away Premiere, go away, skip. Okay, so yeah, we can get to that here in a minute. Um, what I wanted to show you today, um, actually, uh, before I jump into this, so, Today we are on day two of rigging, um, and that's because we kind of postponed day one of rigging and did substance last class period. How, how many of you got something out of that? Like you think that's something you're gonna be able to use? Yeah, I like, I am loving it. Like to me it is such a better method of um, creating materials than all of the other options in the past. Um, and it's pretty quick to be able to get in there and get something, right? Like, yeah. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. So you can do, it's like unlocked, so like you can save out and stuff like that from it? Yeah, it's all the same features, it's just 30 days of it. And that's, then after that, it's $20 a month. Oh, really? That's not bad. I have to. Um, so, so that's cool. Check that out. Um, you know, work around with that. Um, how many of you got a chance to come to the uh, portfolio reviews last night? Thank you. No, actually they weren't. Um, <laughs> but they're intimidating and yeah, it's, it's a it was um I think that they were um I think that the feedback was fair but firm like and like there was there was there, there was no disasters this time around. Um, huh. Oh, Miguel, yeah, yeah, that was, his hard drive, I think, was working. It's like his video was compressed weird or something. It wouldn't play right. Yeah, so him and, him and Livingston ran back over and re-exported it, and it, he, he presented, like, halfway through. And his, I thought his was pretty good. Um, a lot of animation last night. Um, if you did get a chance to come see that, uh, tomorrow night is uh, round two. Um, what time does that start? 5.15-ish, something like that. Yeah. Tonight, we, or last night, we finished up probably about 7.30. Um, we'll have two more people going tomorrow night. There's se last night was seven, tomorrow night's nine. Um, so there'll be a few more people, not all of them are animation. I think there's like three, maybe four people doing animation tomorrow night. Um, a lot of visualization and visual effects um, and game design. So um, yeah, come check it out. I, I definitely think it's helpful. Um, it's helpful because I'm actually seeing a few this is, this is kind of new. I'm seeing a few pieces coming out of this class that are making it into portfolio review. And we've talked about this in the past. 3D animation is just a weird class to me. Like I, I don't necessarily know the right place to fit it in. So I've kind of been beta testing new versions of this class every semester uh, for the last five years I've been here. Um, I, so I want you to also give me some feedback as we go along that, like things to change about. Uh, the class, even if I get just something that occurs to you, be like, yeah, maybe we should do that next year, you know. Um, and I'm open to making changes throughout here. If there's something you're really feeling like I'm not covering well enough, um, or you need just a specific lecture on it, as you see, like, a little later in this semester, um, there's a whole lot of like work days in class, right? Um, and I'm trying to set up these days where I can do a little lecture and then a little work time as well. Um, and I recognize most of you are kind of working while I'm lecturing. Um, so that's, that's cool. Um, 
Today I wanted to cover as much as I could on rigging. And, um, and so that's what I was, uh, what I was kind of focusing on. Um, so my big lecture today on rigging is don't, right? Like, <laughs> I, I, know that, I know that sounds crazy, but like TD exists because in some pro, like the uh, TD class, I'm, I'm assuming everybody here took that, right? Technical direction? Not yet. Not yet? Okay, I didn't know if that was a prerequisite for this one. So technical direction exists to show you that you can um, create all sorts of rigs inside of Maya, right? In most of those cases, though, like you, you'll end up rigging like a full character. Uh, you spend like four weeks on that, right? Four or five weeks. Um, and if you have like three characters in your project, sometimes like, yeah, that's great. Um, if you're going to be using this for a long period of time, being able to create exactly the rig you want um, is is important to know how to do that. But I think that that class is preparing people to work on larger pipelines, right? Um, pipelines where you're going to make a character that you are going to animate on for two hours of a film, or um, or potentially 20 hours of a video game, right? Um, and in this case, like we have to try to expedite that. Like, so depending on the on the complexity of your character, um, looking for shortcuts in rigging is going to save you a lot of time. Um, in fact, once you get into an actual production studio, um, most people don't start from scratch the way you do in that class, right? You have to understand that level first, but like. A person who's getting paid to rig a character all day, they don't open up a character file and go file create or well, what was it? Uh, skeleton create joint click 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 click. Like they have to do that so often, they just have a script that they hit and it generates the perfect skeleton for them, right? Because they pre-made that tool for themselves. Um, they click it, it makes a default biped skeleton. They reposition the joints. They hit another button that sort of prepares that skeleton and cleans it up, right? They hit another button to start creating the leg controllers, right? And they just have like all of these different pre-made um, things that expedite that process, right? And so you need to understand how all of that process works. But at this point in the project, or in a project like this, starting from scratch may end up taking more time then it will benefit you right like you, you may not like that may you may not end up with any better of a rig than some of the options i'm going to talk about today i um i actually just decided to invest in this and this is something it's it's up to you if you want to spend some money on it there's a lot of free versions out there as well um, but there's a lot of scripts out there that you can buy that expedites this i, I have one set of scripts that um, is a controller maker. So it just makes um, uh, any variety of control. It will make the group, it will make the shape, it will zero it out. And then I can also um, use it to generate sort of FK and IK chains quickly, right? And so if I have something really weird like a, a, a spider or something like that, I can quickly make my skeleton and then make those controls and it just it makes it faster. But that was like $50. You may not want to buy it. Right. Um, most of the stuff I do commercially, people pay me more for the animation. And so I just ended up buying a character rigging tool. So the one that I use, um, it's actually the one you'll be, uh, it's a version of what you used on BinBot and what, if you were in the character animation class, what some of those characters are rigged with. Um, it's called the Setup Machine. So I, I was using the Setup Machine for games. Recently I bought the sh Setup Machine 3. Um, and so it's a pretty good one, um, and I have um, I have a uh, a licensed version. So if this is a rig you like, I'll be happy to help you like get your rig set up for that. Having said that, this is not um, the end all be all for free rigs. There's actually a ton or two two easy rigging options. There's actually a ton of different auto rigging options out there. So. Um, I just did some like quick searching. There's a website. How many of you are familiar with high-end 3D? Anybody? Okay. 
This is somewhere you should go a lot. It's basically, um, it's the place that people, uh, it's like the marketplace for um, scripts and rigs and tools um, that you can use in 3D production, right? Um, and so you'll notice that in the top marketplace here, there's this rapid rig advanced. It's $40 um, and it's an auto rigging tool um, that lets you set up a, a pretty quick rig. If you go there and look at the final rig, this rig may look familiar to you because sometimes the characters that you can buy or get for free online are rigged with these free auto riggers, right? Um, so what I usually do is I go up here to the search tool, I set this to Maya, and I set this to scripts and plugins, and then I just search either auto rig or rig or something like that, and I just start looking what I get. So that's not probably the best one. How about just rig? Rig is going to bring up quite a bit of stuff. So we got the slap-on rig, which is thirty-two dollars. Um, there's rigger two for Maya. That's three hundred dollars. Probably that was probably out of your range. Um, and you'll notice that there's a lot of these for sale. Um, and I can I can already hear it in your head. I don't want to spend any money on this, Marlon. Um, and I get that. Um, what I would do is change it to price lowest first. And you'll all right. Are they not are they not listing the free ones in here? So there should be a series of free ones as well. So this is all the pay ones. So let's see if they give us the option to. Um, yeah, free files. There we go. Maya, all categories, scripts and plugins. So we'll search the free ones. And so the first one that's going to come up is Advanced Skeleton 5. So here's the thing about Advanced Skeleton. Um, you all use uh, the, any of the Truong rigs? Like is that guy who's like selling and giving away like tons and tons of rigs. If you came to Portfolio Review last night, you saw like 30 of them. Like he is one of the most like popular like rig creators right now. It's, um, is it Truong CG artist? Um, he has this Gumroad page that's just tons and tons of free rigs, right? Free rigs are cheap rigs, like they're around $5 each, right? Um, most of these are not for commercial use, they're for free use. Um, you may have a commercial version of them, but you, you probably see some of this stuff even like on the portfolio screen downstairs. Um, if I'm not mistaken, most of the rigs that he's using, he's creating with Advanced Skeleton. So, Advanced Skeleton is a really good free option. It's free for non-commercial use, which means if you decide that you want to submit this to film festivals and make money on it, you should pay for it. Um, it's more, the pay version is more expensive. Having said that, that Truong guy is selling rigs all day long with it. So if you pay for it, find a friend who models characters, rig a few more, put them up on, CG Trader or something like that and sell them. But I would recommend using something like that, um, Rigger 2 Trial, I don't, I don't know what the, the limitations of that is. Advanced Skeleton is a really good one. Um, having said that, there's a little bit of a learning curve to it. It's not only you open it up and it just, you click a button and you have a rig, right? You have to place the, the pivot points, you have to do all that stuff um, to learn how to even use the, the auto rig scripts, right? Um, uh, slap on rig is another one that's free uh, or has a free version I think the version that is free is a little bit like limited like it doesn't have as many features um, but it will let you do some some pretty decent stuff so you can see here the the features list uh, the not available in the free version is like there's some other stuff listed there um, so there's a whole bunch of, and I want to say that some of these, like Rigging Toolbox 2 is one of the ones that I own um, down at the bottom. So there's a lot of little things you can do with that. Now there's a couple of other free auto-rigging softwares. Um, one of them is uh, built into Unreal, kind of, um, and I don't even remember, I think it's called Art, Animation Rigging Tools, ART. 
Um, and I think you have to, I haven't, I've never actually used it, but I've had students who use it before. And I think you have to download it through Unreal, um, like through their marketplace, but it's free. It was actually developed by people at Unreal. And it helps you generate a rig through there. I've heard both great and terrible things about it. Um, some people absolutely hate it, some people love it. Um, but that's one to consider. However, I wanted to show you, just in the last few releases of Maya, Maya has an auto-rigging tool set as well. Now, um, they call this the quick rig tool, and it's because it's for when you need a rig on a character um, quickly, like let's say you have a giant crowd of characters, right? and you're needing to put a rig on all of them, right? Um, it does not have the most robust set of features, but it does work. Um, and so you can try this one out too. I, I think that this step of rigging for you is going to be um, sort of multi-tiered. Like you're gonna test drive some stuff, try it out. Don't expect that like, I'm going to do my rigging today. And then like 30 minutes later, you're like, I'm done rigging. It's more like, I'm going to research how to rig my character today. After five tries, you're going to have the right rig, right? Um, so figure out what it is you want your character to be able to do. I am going to show you quickly the, um, this version of the auto rigger that's, that's built into Maya. So I just have a quick character in here. Um, this is something from some previous uh, classes. Um, pretty simple, really. Um, I'm going to grab it and um, up here in, so I have my channel box, my uh, tool menu, my attribute editor. Then there's this little character here, right? Usually this was the human IK button and everybody avoided it because human IK is stupid. Um, but this is now one of the areas where um, the quick rig tool um, will work. So, wait, where is it at? I did this earlier. Yeah, here he is. So we go to skeleton, and then we drag down here at the bottom, quick rig, and it brings up this quick rig menu. I think there's a way of pulling it out of here somewhere too. But, um, so I have my mesh selected. If I hit auto rig, it's going to try to guess where my character's body parts are. And with a character this different, going to get it wrong, right? So I'll just show you if I hit auto rig. It makes some guesses. It throws a skeleton in there, throws some controllers in there. It binds the skin. And my rig looks like this, which means um, my character's arms are up here in the head, right? And I get this terrible <laughs> monstrosity, right? This is, this is not usable, right? Um, so let's just go ahead and delete that. I click my little trash can here and hit OK. It gets rid of it. That's because I was using the one click option. All right? Let's do step by step. So first things first, I've got to grab all this mesh. Right, and, uh, oh man, I think I did that wrong. Let's close this down, try it one more time. Skeleton, quick rig. Where did it go? I guess I have to add. All right, there we go. Add a quick rig character. Um, so I have this quick rig character now. That's, it's kind of like defining this is a character I want to put a quick rig on. I go to step by step. Um, and I want to add all of the geometry I have selected. Right? Um, and then I want to say create update under this guide setting. So it's going to create, it's going to take it a second, but it's going to create all of these little points. Okay? And if you click on one, you'll see, um, if we actually go over here to our channel box, you can see the name of it. Right? So like, that's the left hand, so it got close, but this is the left hip, or the left up leg, right? This is the left knee. And so what I want to do is I want to start moving them to where I actually think they should be. Right? Like that's going to be down here. My knee's going to be here. I'm going to move that over. 
Um, make sure I'm getting some bend in there in the right direction. Um, I get this toe, pull it forward. And I'm just doing this on the left side of my character for right now. So I did all of that, but this side over here didn't update. Right? So what I do is I grab those controls again, and I click this button right here. This will allow me to mirror my joint uh, placement from the left to the right. If you were doing your right, you would do this, and it would mirror to the other side. So I click that, and it puts everything where it's supposed to be. Now this central stuff here, I don't really have to mirror it. I'm just going to move it straight down. Right? So this is my this is my hips. Right? This is my um, spine, spine one, spine two, um, and then this up here is my neck. Lower that down, and this is the head, right? And so really the head joint should be wherever it is you want the head to rotate from. So I wanted to go ahead and go a little higher, eh, maybe not, maybe more like right there. Right. So the arms really got messed up. It's really like this is your forearm, and so that means that needs to be a little bit lower, maybe like that. I need to kind of keep in mind at which direction I want that to bend, so maybe like that. This is my um, upper arm, uh, my um, sort of like my shoulder, I guess. And then this is my clavicle. So maybe I'll put that more like right there, your shoulder. I don't know, maybe there. Um, because this character's arm is so different, I, I, I kind of have to just guess. And I kind of wanted to have a lot of bend to it. So I'm going to do something like that. And again, once I get those close, I can select all of them and then use this mirror across to realign the others. So now I have all these points where I want them. Right? Um, I can uh, create a skeleton. So skeleton and control rig. If we look under the skeleton, there's some stuff we can change in here, but um, let's just do skeleton and control rig. And I'm going to hit create update. And it's going to use all of that information to create this skeleton. Right? So you can kind of see um, what I get now when I move this around. And it's a weird um, skeleton because it's going to kind of work as both an FK and an IK skeleton. Right? So I can do that and get this control out of it. Looking at it now, I wish I put that a little higher up. So I'll probably, I think I can delete that. Oh no, I don't want to do that. What do I do? I'm worried if I do that, it's going to delete my. Can you just undo it? I think if I. Maybe. Uh. Uh, I Apparently I can, though. Like, there's joints there, but it's they're not accurate. Um, I really just want that one to be a little bit further back. And let's see if I can do that and mirror those across. There we go. That updated it. Um, I think I want it to be more like that. There we go. And so now I can create and update that skeleton. There we go. And so we can kind of test around with this and see um, see what we think, right? Like this is the head rotation, but I can also rotate it, right? So it's got a lot of options on here on how we can manipulate this. I get this um, spine control, right? Um, and I can also sort of move that spine. Um, so this is a this is a rough version of the rig, but it, it seems to be working for the most part, right? So we have something that works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and now uh, try to do some skinning. Let's see what it does. My binding method is CVB default. Let's try that. Um, if I hit create update. So I skinned it. Let's see what we got. Perfect. <laughs> Let 
Let's go back here and change. Are you sure I want to delete the following? I do. So let's try. It's, it's trying geodesic voxel. Let's instead do joint hierarchy. Let's try let's try heat map and see what it does. <laughs> it does what heat map always does. I know it seems like uh -huh. Yeah, it's going to mess up anything. So. <laughs> Let's go back and change those settings again. Uh, okay. So, yeah, just usually I do um, closest in hierarchy. And that will give me... Um, That'll give me something close. Let's do bind skin. There we go. So that could be worse. Um, so we're going to get some deformation. We always do. We're going to have to do some painting of the skin weights. But we now have a character that I could start animating, right? Um, it's not terrible. Um, and interestingly, um, Maya offers you some options here. Um, like we have the ability to pick stuff from in here. Like this is kind of like a, a, a GUI picker. Um, I've not worked with this a ton just because I personally am not a huge fan of it. Um, but we got uh, just the, this has always been for uh, human IK, which works a little differently. Um, now you can make this work like human IK. This is a little different than a regular rig. Which is, if I grab this control and pull it, which what happens to the rest of my character? Like, he like reaches with that arm, right? Some people like that, some people hate that. I'm kind of on the hate it um, bandwagon, but that's just me. Um, and I'm also like, I really wish you could get more spine deformation out of that. I'm sure there's ways you can. Um, but yeah, all right, what is this? No, I do not want to see that. Um, so within each of these, though, I think we can we can click like here. You got some hand controls, not a lot. Um, but we can also go in here on each of these controls, and we can adjust stuff like I thought we could adjust stuff like the radius of this, so you can see it better. So we could do like that. So I could go grab these two controls, start adjusting the radius, just so we're able to grab our controls and see those a little bit better, right? Um, And I grab my placement control as well, make it larger. And so now we kind of have a, a character we can we could start animating if we wanted to. Um, I also think that the animation toolkit thing here um, will allow you to select the whole character and, and like key it as well. But you can always do it this way as well, like just you know creating your own selection set. Um, So that'll get you close, right? Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about today was, well, of course we need to still do some skinning, right? So we can paint skin weights. Um, I want that head to be skinned entirely to the head joint. So I'm just going to flood skin that, right? And so now I'm going to be able to get you know, that deformation a little, a little easier, right? Um, the arm, I'm actually okay with how that's deforming. I'm not okay with what's happening here on the side. So I'm just going to go to paint skin weights. Um, anything to do with any of the arms, I'm just going to paint that onto the spine. So really I want my spine to only be affected by this. I don't want, it, I don't want my arm here to affect it at all. So um, there's a lot we can do in here skin weights wise. Um, if you feel uncomfortable with skin weights, let me know and I can help you with that. Um, 
but I usually just use replace. This is this is my workflow. Um, I will go up my character spine. So this is the base spine here. Um, well, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, I would shrink my brush down to here, and I just like to replace this entire thing with complete white, right? So that means the spine is the only thing controlling um, that edge. And then spine two, maybe that's the only thing, maybe spine two here, maybe that's the only thing controlling that edge. How many spines we got? No, it would be spine one. Spine one's the only thing controlling this one. And then spine two, we can paint all of this stuff up here at the top. Um, you can actually hide meshes as well if you need to for control H. Um, to this. Again. Um, so for spine two, the only thing being controlled is up here. And if I start deforming that, it's going to look a little like like now now this arm is not going to affect the character side quite as much. But if I start deforming this spine control, it may end up looking a little faceted. Um, that's not really that bad though. So let me turn my head back on. So that's not too bad um, on that. I need to make that control bigger. Um, but the but just in case, like what you can do is soften that skinning. So you go back into your paint skin weights, and for each of those spines, I'm just going to smooth flood that a few times. One or two, spine one, one or two, spine one or two, and we're going to get a little bit more even distribution of that, and it should work a little bit better now. see if there's a way to unpin this to where it or to unlike lock that to uh, maybe pin translate what's that do yeah, it's gonna keep my like that's not really working the way I wanted it to um, so again like this is a, a quick way of getting a rig on your character that that works okay right now um, I want to open up a different character. Um, let me back up. Recognize the things that are not on this rig, right? Um, there's not an FKIK switch because it's kind of using this weird hybrid system. Um, and there's not finger controls. So if you want finger controls, you have to add those in your own, in some way. Um, and there's nothing to do with the face. Like, there have been a couple of um, things in the past that have tried to create auto face rigging software. Um, nothing really does it that well. Like, at least not one that makes a rig that, that I like for faces. So I want to talk about that just a little bit. How do we rig a character's face? Um, and how do we rig something that is we want to deform in a very specific way? Um, so let's let's go ahead and save. Am I going to save this? Sure. Let's save scene as quick rig test. Um. So I'm going to open up my um, my little pinion because he's cute. So this little dude here probably would not be um, the best candidate for the quick rig. 
just because he's such a weird shape, right? And like, really, he's just a spine with some wiggly arms and some wiggly feet. Right? And so that this may be a candidate for a character that you would want to rig just manually. Like you would just put your own rig in it, however you needed it to deform. Right? Um, it doesn't mean you have to. You may be able to use one of these auto rigging softwares to get something um, pretty similar. Because despite the weird shapes of penguins, they pretty much have the same skeletal structure that me and you do. Um, they're, you know, no fingers really, um, but they uh, they just have it different. Like penguins do have knees. It's just inside of this, like this mass that they have for a torso, right? But that's not necessarily what I wanted to talk about in this. What I wanted to talk about today was was blend shapes. Now, have we talked about blend shapes in here at all? I know I've done this in other classes, so. A blend shape is a, um, a deformation on an object that is specific, right? So let me, let me just show you in a, um, in a different file or in a different object. Okay, I'm going to create a sphere. The penguin laid an egg. Um, so with this sphere, right, let's say I, I wanted a couple of different things to happen. Let's say I wanted it to, like, grow horns, right? Or I wanted it to, um, I wanted just this specific edge to sink in like this, right? Like there's all sorts of different specific def deformations that I can make happen manually on the vertex level. A blend shape is um, our way of blending between those different orientations of the vertices. So let me show you how, the, the old way that you would do this is you would make a duplicate of the model, you would change it um, to the way you want that to look, you would add that as a blend shape to the original model, and then there's a, this editor that will allow you to sort of, you know, sort of uh, change in between that. Uh, they've made it actually a lot easier. You don't have to do any of that stuff anymore. Um, you can still make it that way, but the way that I make it now is if you go, if you select the object, and you go to Windows, Animation Editor, and it's the Shape Editor, we get this menu. So the first thing we need to do is create a blend shape. So that's going to be a node that's a deformer on an object or set of objects, right? So I'll create this blend shape, and nothing has happened yet because I haven't manipulated it. So what I have to do is I have to make target shapes, right? Right now it's a sphere. What is it I'm wanting it to blend into, right? Um, so, I mean, we could, uh, we could do anything that we want here. So I'm going to add a target. And when I do that, you'll see it's in edit mode, right? And this means while edit mode is on, I can go in here and manipulate these vertices, and it's not going to destroy it, right? So if I go to vertex, so I grab all of these, scale that flat, and move it down like this. This is now one of the shapes for my blend shape, right? And so if I use this slider and slide that back to zero, see I can blend in between those two. So whenever I'm happy with it, I can turn that back to zero, uncheck edit, and add another one, right? Let's add, um, let's try this. Let's go to the bottom now, add a new target, and on this target, I'm going to scale in the bottom part, right? So now I have a second blend shape. Does that, right? Um, let's say on, um, on uh, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uncheck edit. Now at any point I can rename these. Um, I can double click here, we'll call this flat top. flat bottom. Right. Um, I can grab this edge here. I need to remember to add a target before I do this or otherwise I'm actually just editing the model. Add a target and as long as edit is on, and hit B, scale my brush way down and scale this in. Sort of. 
brush a little bigger, something like that. Right? And we can call this pinched center. Right? So I can turn that back off. Right? Um, and then I can do like what we said earlier. I can select the object. Um, I have to have the blend shape selected. Um, add a target to it. And we can go ahead and do horns. Right? I can grab a vertex there, a vertex there. Um, I believe my soft select is too much, so let's pull that down. Something like this. Pull those up. A little bit more. Pull those up. And maybe pull those forward. Okay, so now my, my object can grow horns. Now, the cool part about this is that these are additive. That means this is not an either or situation. It's not that I have to turn on flat top and then before I can turn on flat bottom, I have to turn that off. I can add as much as I want to of flat bottom. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to look at that vertex displacement, the distance that that vertex has been moved, right? And if another blend shape moved it as well, it will just add that movement on top of it. If that vertex has not been moved at all, it just leaves it alone, right? It doesn't, it doesn't do anything to it. So that center section, like on both flat top and flat bottom, I didn't mess with those, right? The top section, I didn't mess with that on pinched center, right? So I can still get that, and I can still turn this part on and off. And then, of course, we have the horns. Right? Like I can layer that in there however we want to. And now he's breathing. Oh, he's angry. Um, OK. This is, for a long time, the primary way that facial animation was created. Um, for a long time, it was that you used the um, call, uh, the, the phonemes, it's the, the phonetic shape that sounds make. So like M, like is the mum, 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 like that lip squeeze together. Whereas like oo, like who's there, um, you make that oo, like round, like pucker shape, right? And you would make a blend shape for each of those, and you would just blend in and out of those as your character was talking. Um, little bits at a time, facial animation started becoming based off of um, what are called, um, what's the facial action coding system. It's basically your, your muscles in your face are only capable of so many different, um, so many different, like, configurations. And if you don't believe me, like take the corner of your mouth and try to touch your eyelid with it, right? We can't, you can't do it, right? Um, so you're only, you're limited to certain, to certain facial features. Um, and so a lot of that now is based off of that. Um, the limitation of blend shapes is that blend shapes cannot work as fluidly as they do in Maya in a game engine. So in video games, when you needed facial animation, that facial animation was usually driven by um, bones that were put into the face, just like we would rig anything else. We'd put a whole bunch of bones into the face and manipulate those, right? Um, but if you're rendering in here, or if you're doing limited blend shape work in Unreal, um, you can probably get away with some blend shapes, um, or face animation. You can probably get away with blend shapes. So let's look at our penguin here and, and just see what um, I'm talking about. Oh, man. What I'm talking about. Yep. Um, good question. Can, can you extrude it? No. The, the, to, the topology has to stay the same. Um, so the only way you can make an extrusion work is if the original mesh um, had the topology to allow for that. So if you know a very specific thing you're wanting to happen, you can do that. You can build that extrusion mesh and then just smooth it back out onto it. And there's going to be like a dense patch in your mesh. And then one of your blend shapes is that thing growing out, right? 
Um, and I, I think that that would be a good example. A horn would actually probably be a good example. Is that you would probably just want to model all of the detail in there for the horn, but it would just be skinned smooth, and then your blend shape would be that horn growing out of that shape. Um, so, uh, but no, all, all the ver all the number of vertices have to be the same on each of them. Um, but very good question. Okay, so let's grab our pinion. Um, for me, I, I think the primary way I want to be able to animate this penguin's mouth is just by rotating it, right? I want to be able to do this, right? Um, he has a little big tongue in there too. Um, right. He's adorable. I, I love this little guy. Um, and so for that, probably what I would do is have a, um, a joint in there. So... Uh, if I were going to go ahead and make a, a let's make a quick version of this rig. Um, I'll go to the um, right view. Uh, four, go ahead and get a skeleton, create joints. Um, I'm not going to really worry about the feeder arms in this. And then I would have another joint that comes out of here and goes to there, maybe out to there. And I would I would consider if I wanted to have a um, if I wanted to have a, a top joint as well for that piece, right? Um, we got a display um, animation. There's this joint size. Can make those smaller so you can see where they are a little bit better, right? <clears throat> and um, I would just use this skeleton. Oh, I missed the tongue. Skin, bind skin. Um, this I want to flood skin to joint four. Thank you. There we go. Good catch. Um, and so that should mean that this joint now. Oh. Um, I want to try this. Like one of the things you can do. It's a little bit of a, a pain. Um, let's call this draw one. Jaw two. Um, I'm just going to select this mesh, uh, right click. I'm going to select all my vertices, shift greater than, select all of them. <coughs> Windows, um, it's the general editor's component editor. And under <coughs> my smooth skin, I'm going to set all of jaw one and jaw two to zero. That way, nothing is influencing them. All right, let me rephrase it. Nothing on the the, the uh, torso is being influenced by them. And so now it will redistribute those weights to those other joints. And so now we get better. <laughs> Even better. What? Uh, uh, why are they laughing at you, little guy? You're okay. <coughs> Joint four, flood that, and then I will flood the feet to. Joint one, 
There we go. So that should be closer now. Yay! Now he's working, right? So um, we have that. I just wanted to be able to do that on top of it and, and not have to do that with a blend shape. Now the reason for that is actually really subtle but still important. The tip of this uh, beak is rotating in an arc, right? Um, and if I were doing that with a blend shape, blend shapes blend linearly, right? Um, if I were blending from the mouth closed to the mouth open, the, the beak would shrink in the middle and then stretch back out. Um, and so I don't, I don't want that. Um, so that's why I use a jaw for like hinge related things or a joint for hinge related things. I would consider doing the same thing even on a, on a full character. But now that we have that, we can go in here and select all of these parts of the character that we needed to form. Um, perspective. I'm going to go ahead and leave the eyebrows or the eyeballs out of this. But I can select all of that and say create blend shape. Oh, do I really have to do? Really? Okay. Apparently I have to do them one at a time. I didn't really want to. Um, so I'm going to create a blend shape. We'll call this one body. Right. Um, I'll create another blend shape. Can I do this? I, I may be able to do this all in one piece if I combined the mesh before I did all this. Um, so this is top beak. This is And then I'd need to do a tongue one as well. I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. So how I would do this is for um, for body one, I would add a target, right? And that target may just be um, let's see, um, left brow up, right? So let's name it that L brow up. Right. And so what I can do now is go in there, grab the edges maybe. Let's try that. Try selecting these edges. Um, set this to soft select. And just sort of move that up a little bit. Right. Now, my tendency is to take this too far. Like, you would rather go too far with this blend shape and just never take it that far. Um, when you're animating, then need it and you know not be able to do it, right? So I'm just going to really push it up there as high up as I can imagine uh, my surprise little penguin could ever get. Right? So again, I'm just going to keep pushing it um, until it's like way big, right? Um, and now I have this blend shape where he can raise his eyebrow. Right. Um, I can turn that off. I can just leave that on now and use my next blend shape to be our brow up. Right. And I can sort of use what I have over there to, to create it. Now I'm doing like a left and right. Um, it doesn't mean you have to do them separately um, unless you want like a, um, an asymmetrical like if you're, if you're wanting it to be um, perfect like if you never think you're going to animate one eyebrow separately from the other um, you don't have to do it this way but um, more than likely you will animate one brow separately from the other so I would, I would go ahead and do one of each side um, because you want the option to have one brow be surprised and the other not, right? You want to be able to do um, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, right? Now, interestingly, we can take blend shapes into the negative numbers. Like right now, it's just between zero and one, right? But if I put that at 1.5, I can push it past.
past the shape that I made. Right? I can keep pushing until it really breaks it, right? Um, I can also put this at negative one, and I get the opposite. So I'm really kind of controlling the range. I can have them scrunch it a little bit there. Um, to me, I really, I, I don't, I'm going to undo all that. I really don't like doing that. I like being more in control of it. Um, zero, one. Ah, apparently I've already kind of messed that up. Um, now, I'm sure you've already kind of figured out that the way we animate this is we, we set keyframes on each of these, right? And we have the option to key them here. Um, we can also create a control rig if we wanted to um, in our viewport that drives these shapes. Now, if you want the mouth to blend with the body, so for example, let's say I wanted this guy to smile. Okay, I'm going to create a new target, and I'll call this, um, let's say B smile for the body. Um, crap, beak starts with a B too. Um, let's just try that one. Let's see if it'll just let me name it smile. It will. So I have this smile modifier turned on on all of them, right? And so now if I just go in here and start editing these faces, I can set this to symmetry object X and pull that up, pull it out, right? And then I would go in here to the top beak. Um, I can actually probably do both of these at the same time, right? I'm gonna click on this one and go to vertex two. Ugh. Just like that, right? Since symmetry is on. I can probably make my brush a little smaller. I can make him smile. And so now to get that smile to happen, I have to edit all three of these, right? I have to turn these off. And I have to be able to pull all three of those smiles up at the same time. Um, but let's animate that and see that happening. Right? So I'm just going to set a keyframe. I do that by clicking this dot here. Um, I'll go a few frames later. Set that turning up. And so now, oh, stupid auto key. Uh, turn all that up. And now, <coughs> smile. Um, which, of course, we can always push that more. And if you're not happy with this, you can always go back into edit here and just continue to push it more and more, right? Um, vertex, let's grab that one. Um, I think we need to add. little bit of creasing in here maybe uh, maybe add some cheek to that and then with this object Center. And I just feel like when in doubt, push it, right? a little bit more like a smile now, right? And we can sort of scrub my timeline to see if that's working. 
Um, you can also do little things like if you wanted to make an ooh shape or whatever. So we're just multi uh, editing multiple things here, right? Um, and you can add these to whatever uh, deformer you or whatever controller you want to. Now I do want to show you something here. Um, right now, if I edit this joint, right, he's going to move with that deformation. Right, and if I get some eyebrow motion in here, all of that's going to happen, right? That's because I made the blend shape after I skinned the character. If you make the blend shape before you skin the character, what happens is that blend takes into account that the character is in the T-pose or whatever pose you're modeling in, right? And then when you you'll deform your character with the skeleton, and then you'll start turning on blend shapes and the character will just go back to the T-pose. It's because your blend shape is overriding your skin, right? Um, the way you change that is you just change the input order. So if we select our mesh, right click, and say inputs, all inputs. Right now my skin cluster is on top of the blend shape. If the blend shape is on top of the skin cluster, you have to middle click it right here and, and drag it down, right? So if I did that, you'll see that uh, maybe it's not, maybe it doesn't do it anymore. Oh, nice. Well, anyway, never mind. Apparently that's not a concern anymore. Um, wait, that's still, was it still the same? Oh, well, never mind. Um, so, forget that I said that. It works that way with other, um, it must be the new way they, they created the, uh, the, the add and shape tool thing. Um, that they've actually fixed that issue. I've never ran into that with it, with it fixed. So. so this works with anything. Um, so if you need your object to, um, if you need your object to deform in like all sorts of different ways, like this is actually a pretty easy way of doing that, right? So watch this. Um, if I go to File, New Scene, not Save, um, I'm going to create a plane here. Right. Um, and I'm going to do a very simple um, deformation on this plane where I um, actually I'm going to duplicate it control D um, I'm going to hide one of them so let's hide that one and on this one I'm going to do a, a quick like end cough simulation so I'm going to go to uh, effects end cloth create end cloth um, take my cube uh, end cough, passive collider, hit play, let it simulate over it. And I'm just going to, uh, let me go back, uh, simulate like to that. I'm going to stop it and hit control D on this. Okay. And then I can go ahead and delete all of my nucleus stuff. I think I can do that with end cough. Um, can I remove, yeah, remove end cough. Eh, apparently I just have to just delete it. I mean, there's a way to do it that way, but. So now that's just an object, right? But it's an object with the same topology as this object, right? And so I can create a blend shape in other ways as well. And how I do that, select um, the deformed object. The last object you select will be the object with the blend shape on it. And so it may just work to hit create blend shape. Yeah, it will. Um, and now my blend shape on let me hide this. My blend shape on this object is just that object, right? Um, and so, however you make that deformation, um, we can we can do this. Like, let's say some people. I don't know if anybody's doing. I guess Robert's doing that at the airplane one. Um, but like, if you're doing a car chase and you need to like 
two cars to run into each other, you could dent a fender and use a blend shape to make that dent happen, right? Um, if you are needing, um, there's just all sorts of uses for this, right? So this is something that you'll likely implement into your, um, into your rigs. Now, the, the way you use this to like, drive things, you'll notice in most uh, character rigs you download, there's like controls that you can move around and it drives the face deformation. We can do that. Really what they're doing is they're driving this value, the zero to one, they're driving that with another object's location, right? So when you move an object up in the air, it turns that uh, plane um, thing up and down, or this plane blend shape up and down, right? So to show you how we would do that, um, create a curve, right? Let's um, rotate that, okay. move this over here, right? Uh, I want to do modify freeze transformation. And so the way you do that is um, the same way we wire stuff together in principles of animation, right? I go to Windows, General Editor, um, Connection Editor, and I'm going to connect my objects translate Y. Right? So if you go in here, you find um, translate Y. I'm going to connect that to this blend shape node plane three, right? So I select my object, I select the blend shape, reload right, and you'll see my inputs, um, it's, wait, is that not it? Weights, I'm sorry. My weights is plane three. So I just want my translate Y to drive plane three, hit close. And so now as I move this up and down, I can drive that blend shape with an object. Um, if you don't want to do it that way, you can also um, you can right click on here and break that connection because I don't want that anymore. Um, you can also do it by adding an attribute, modify, um, add attribute. You can call this um, blend one, right, and hit OK. And so now I can connect that blend one to this P plane. And so you can have all of your character's facial um, shapes on one control that you can, you can animate like that. Does, does that make sense? There's nothing wrong with animating in the shape editor, um, but some people find that a little clunky, especially if you're trying to drive like multiple blend shapes at once. Right? So you can create controllers for this. Um, and I can help you set that up. Uh, I think each person's gonna have a different um, need for that, right? Okay, any questions on this? Yeah, no? All right. I'm gonna go ahead and stop. It's 11.57. Um, I think this class gets out at like 12.35, so it gives you a little bit of time to work um, or do whatever you wanna do. If you have questions, I'll be more than happy to hop around and, and help you come up with some stuff. I would say some of what I would do today, is, or some of what I would do over the next few days, is research which auto rigging solution you want to use, if any. Some of you, your characters may be like the way they're configured, you just need to manually rig them. Um, rig them with the animator in mind, because that's you, right? Like, if there's areas that never need to be animated, like, don't spend forever creating controls for that, right? Let's say you have one character and all they ever do is just for one frame or for one shot, they shake their fist, right? That means the character's hand is always in a fist. Like, why model the character's hand open, rig all those fingers, curl them in, just for one second of this, right? Like, just model the character's hand in a fist and animate that, right? Like, so, so think in terms of what it is you actually need to get done. Um, some of you, like, your rigging is going to be super simple. Some of you are going to want to try to animate complex full, uh, full character rigs. I'll work with you either way because everybody has sort of different workloads depending on what the project is. So, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and stop and upload this video to YouTube. Is that helpful? Is that helpful? Is this is this something you're looking back at, or is it more like just there, just as a safety net? Has anybody watched any of them? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's all I wanted to do. Like, if, if you did, that's, if it's working. Um, 
Actually, um, I'll go ahead and stop this recording. Um,